Frank Canton, a name that straddles the thin line between justice and lawlessness in the turbulent times of the Old West. From his early days as a respected lawman to later becoming a notorious outlaw, Canton's story encapsulates the contradictions and complexities of a man who navigated both sides of the law. In this video, we dive into the mysterious life of the cold-blooded lawman turned cowboy and notorious outlaw, uncovering untold stories of the Wild West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Frank M. Canton, originally known as Josiah Horner, was a fugitive from the Old West who assumed a false identity and served as a deputy U.S. Marshal. Hailing from Wyoming, Canton previously served as a sheriff and detective. However, his reputation suffers as he and his associates face charges of orchestrating various illegal activities, including assassinations that cross the line of the law. One notable incident that further tainted Canton's name was his involvement in the hanging of Ellen Watson, an event that provoked public outrage and fueled animosity towards the powerful ranchers whom Canton served. Seeking to regain control over grazing lands, these influential ranchers financed a brutal assault on smaller operators, ultimately leaving to the infamous Johnson County War. During this conflict, Canton played an important role in directing a group of mercenaries led by Frank Wolcott, but their plans were thwarted by a group of local residents defending their property rights. Faced with increasing scrutiny in Wyoming, Canton seized the opportunity to escape the state, then devoted most of his working life in law enforcement for the court of hanging. Judge Isaac Parker Josiah Horner was born on September 15, 1849 in Harrison Township, Henry County, Indiana. But Canton, in his own autobiography, Frontier Trails, claims to have been born in Virginia, about 15 miles from Richmond. Historical records showing that he eventually found his way to Texas as a cowboy. Around 1871, he had turned to a life of crime, participating in bank robberies and cattle theft, both serious crimes during that time. A tragic incident occurred on October in 1874 when Horner exchanged gunfire with Buffalo soldiers, resulting in the death of one soldier and the wounding of another. In 1877, he was arrested for a bank robbery in Comanche, Texas, but escaped from the custody of the Texas Rangers. He then set off for Agalala, Nebraska, took the alias Frank M. Canton, and returned to herding cattle. Frank Canton landed a job as a stock detective for the Wyoming Stock Growers Association during a period marked by rising tensions between wealthy ranchers, buffalo herders, and locals. This era saw an increasing number of settlers staunchly opposed to overgrazing and sought to shift the balance of political influence. In 1885, Canton was elected sheriff of Johnson County, Wyoming and was considered a trusted ally of cattle barons. A letter from the Pinkerton Agency introducing Tom Horn underscored his reputation for taking a firm stance against suspects. He held the role for four years but eventually resigned after a foreman from one of the famous ranches escaped suspiciously while in his custody. While Canton also holds the position of a deputy U.S. Marshal, it is rumored that he is not only a well-paid detective, but also a hired assassin and intimidator. The unsolved shooting of a law-abiding homeowner who claimed Canton had threatened his life due to processing incriminating evidence against Canton's associates further deepened mistrust towards him. To the outrage of the community, Canton was arrested when the crowd began to form. However, several large ranchers came forward to bail him out, and with the help of a lawman, he managed to leave the state. By the time more evidence became available against him, Canton had moved to Illinois, leading to the case being dropped. During the Johnson County War, Frank Canton returned as a local guide to Frank Wolcott's predominantly Texan group, who were to execute a death list of meaningful rustlers Canton had drawn up. 
On April 9, 1892, Canton led the so-called regulators to KC Ranch, where their primary targets were Nate Champion, a witness against several of Canton's associates in a murder case, and Nick Ray is also there. In the ensuing gunfight, Ray was shot dead within the first minutes. Champion, showing his bravery, killed at least four of the regulators and wounded the others. At 5 p.m., Canton resorted to setting the house on fire, forcing Champion to hastily escape. Despite firing his Winchester rifle, Champion still failed to withstand 28 rounds. Two days later, a substantial force led by Sheriff Angus surrounded the regulators at T.A. Ranch, with surrender imminent. However, the arrival of the United States Cavalry intervened to rescue Canton and his companions. Due to the influence of powerful ranch interest groups, Canton, like other regulators, escaped prosecution. Determined to leave Wyoming, he embarks on a journey that spans hundreds of miles, leaving the state forever. Continuing with law enforcement, Frank Canton ventured into the region that is now Oklahoma. As a deputy U.S. Marshal stationed at Fort Smith, Arkansas, he collaborated with famous colleagues such as Heck Thomas, Chris Madsen, Bass Reeves, and Bill Tillman in the Indian Territories. In 1895, Canton joined a team tasked with capturing fugitives Bill and John Shelley, who had escaped from a Pawnee prison. The chase led them to a cabin across the Arkansas River where the outlaws were hiding. After five hours of fierce gunfights and more than 600 shots fired, Canton employed a bold strategy. He pulled a burning wagon towards the cabin, causing the outlaws to surrender. On November 6, 1896, in Pawnee, Oklahoma, Canton was involved in a deadly gunfight. As events unfold, Canton meets Bill Dunn on the street. According to Canton's account, Dunn uttered the words, God damn you, Canton, I've got it in for you, before making a move to draw his pistol. In the ensuing gunfight, the gun caught on his sling, giving Canton the opportunity to quickly draw his gun and shoot Dunn in the head, killing him instantly. The local law enforcement agency, for which Canton works, considers this a legitimate act of self-defense. In 1897, Frank Canton went to Alaska to follow the gold rush. However, his term as Deputy U.S. Marshal ended in controversy with allegations that he abused public funds. Returning to the States in 1907, Canton assumed the role of assistant to the Oklahoma National Guard. It was during this time that he publicly confessed his true identity as Horner and was later pardoned by the governor of Texas. By 1925, Canton's health had declined markedly. He suffered from baldness, poor vision, sensitivity to light, and severe hearing loss. Struggling to find work, Canton received a modest grant from the Texas Cattle Breeders Association. His daughter, Ruby, still unmarried, played an important role in supporting Canton and his wife, Annie, when they moved into Ruby's residence. On September 1, 1927, Canton's health deteriorated to the point of being bedridden prompting Ruby to call a doctor. After the evaluation, the doctor announced the sad news that Canton was in the final stages of cancer, giving him only a few days to live. On September 15th, the family gathered at Ruby's home to celebrate Canton's 78th birthday. Finally, Canton passed away on September 27, 1927, in Edmond, Oklahoma, ending his legendary journey. He is buried at Fairlawn Cemetery in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.